has responded to fight against the virus. First of all, let me ensure you, eh? all the stuff here come to the embassy is basically the Chinese. Whoever come to the embassy or to South Africa, we give them the form to fill in, to tell us where they are from, and in the past two weeks, they have to give us very in detail where they are from in the past two weeks and where they are. And whoever have just come back from China, we light even my staff. <coughs> now they have the lunar year holiday in China, but whoever now wouldn't come back to my embassy, they have to give my permission to make sure they are safe to come here. Even this, when they come to South Africa, we from the airport go straight to their home. They stay at home at least seven days, at least. And tell me the temperature, the health temperature every morning to make sure not anything abnormal. And also, I'm happy to tell now this is five staff of my member today join us to work. They come back from China, but I keep them in the house and get my permission last night. They have to tell me all this day how about his failure in China. So whoever come here, you are feel sure and relaxed. We are safe. So first, uh, let me brief you the, on the latest situation of the outbreak and the main measure that China has taken uh, to deal with it. And then I'd like to take your questions. Indeed, this is a very serious epidemic and deadly virus posing a threat to the health and life of the humankind globally. The novel coronavirus does, does not only remain in Wuhan, China, but has been spreading to some neighboring country and developed country, to American, Canada, and some Europe country. As of midnight of February 2nd, Last night, a total of 17,205 confirmed cases in China and 21,558 suspected cases of new coronavirus. And unfortunately to say, 361 deaths have been reported. Among them, including 15 confirmed cases in Hong Kong, A in Macau, 10 in Taiwan of China. And I like to say, fortunately, to see that by now, 475 patients, in fact, patients, have been recovered and cured and left the hospital back home. I'm happy to see, you see, every day we have the, the list for the whole country, where they come from, where's the problem there. And now, last e uh, yesterday, we have 57 people passed away, die of the virus, but 147 infected patients recover and killed. So now the recovery is almost three times recover people three times more than the people die of that accident. Of course, we, it's all still very challenging to us. And globally, there are 20 confirmed cases in Japan. Japan now become the first. And 19 confirmed cases in Thailand, 18 in Singapore, 15 in South Korea, 12 in Australia, A in Americans, A in Malaysia, 6 in France, 7 in Berlin, 1 in Nepal, 4 in Canada, 1 in Cambodia, A in Germany, and 1 in Sri Lanka. No confirmed cases has ever been reported in Africa today. But we are happy to see that we don't like to see something happen here. What is more challenging to us is that 
that the source of infection of from this new coronavirus up to today in Wuhan has not been discovered, including America and all the different countries in the world, the WHO, WHO experts, up to today, they did not discover where the infection comes from. So this is the first time such a kind of coronavirus infected the humankind. So it's dangerous because we don't know it. The nature of the new virus is unknown. The risk of the mutation are still unclear. But the virus ability to spread is growing. Hopefully, China has mobilized the most capable export national wide to develop the vaccines against the virus. The Chinese CDC has isolated the virus and is currently identifying a C stream. The Chinese scientists are racing against the time to develop the vaccines against the virus, the detection device, and the reagents have been developed in China and applied nationally. An early application of the vaccine is expected to be soon available in China and the rest of the world. We are fighting so hard for that. This is an unexpected infectious virus which had, had never infected the humankind before. Since the outbreak in Wuhan, President Xi Jinping, His Excellency, the President of China, and the Chinese government and people, the party, while putting the safety of the people's life and health first, have made the prevention and control of the new corona, uh, coronaviruses as the top priority and primary task of the party and government as well. And the CPC Central Committee has set up a leading group at once and call on the parties, officials at all levels to fight in the front against the epidemic and exhaust every effort to win the battle against the virus. The Chinese government has been making an all out national wide effort to control and prevent the virus. First, a national joint prevention and control system and program have been, has been swiftly put in place and has been operating, working very well, effectively. President Xi Jinping has been commanding the battle himself, overseeing and guiding the national prevention and control effort. Instructed by His Excellency President Xi Jinping, Premier Li Keqiang toured to Wuhan, the epicenter the center of the virus to encourage and guide the local prevention and control effort on the ground. Vice Premier Sun, Sun Chun Lang, who is the vice premier in the central government in charge of the public health, stay in Wuhan together with the people to command and coordinate the deployment of the prevention and treatment. I'm proud of my leadership. When there's something happened there in with the people in difficult time, our top leader in the front together with the people. A national joint prevention and control mechanism led by the National Public Commission, Public Health Commission, composed of 32 military governmental departments were put in place immediately after the outbreak to strengthen the coordination and move quickly to deal with the epidemic. So the national joint prevention and control system and program has been working. Second, massive and effective effort at all levels of Chinese government and society has been made to prevent and control the spread of the epidemics. In order to stop and cut off the transmission of the spreading source of virus. Wuhan City, with 
more than 11 million population has suspended the operation of all public transportation, public activities starting from January 23rd, temporary, temporary closing the departure channel of the airport and train station at, since that time, and require the local citizens not to leave Wuhan without special region. So you can imagine China, when we have something there, this is a very dangerous, infectious disease. So we ask our people to stay at home and stop, suspend the, all the public transportation. The national quarantine campaign has been launched. Now all the provinces, city, community, and villages in China have kicked off the highest level contingent response system and program for public health emergency to prevent the spread of the virus. Some villages and communities even lock themselves down. The Chinese, community, the Chinese people were given more holiday and all people in China, including the foreigners, are requested to stay at home, hotel, and university during the epidemic period to avoid the public infection. Nationwide, public facilities such as cinema, museum, parks, scenic sites have been closed. The temperature screening at all airports and seaports and railway stations have been carried out strictly to prevent the spread of the virus epidemic out of China. The Chinese travel agency has been instructed and requested to suspend the group tour, both domestically and internationally, to reduce the passenger flow. This is the best and effective measure China has taken and the best and head but heavy price China has paid, has to pay to fight against such an unexpected, unknown virus to protect the peoples of China and the world as a whole. This is the action no words that China has taken to respect and protect the human rights and win the approval and support from the kind people and countries and international organizations such as WHO. It's not easy, my brother. I challenge anyone else in the world. When you have the infectious disease like this, can you suspend the public transportation, public facility? And some people in the West talking about this is against the human rights. Unfortunately to say, if China did not control suspending the public transportation in China, and we have 1.4 billion population over, and let them allow to travel in now, the country and the whole world, Everybody must close the door. And that is the end of the world. So sometimes the people, be a man. Be kind to each other, will be good to us. The prize, because we don't know, no one knows, including Americans. Americans already evacuated the infected people back home. Up to today, they did not have the program to cure the infected people. I challenge them. Free to say. You are free to say, but give me the program. The infected program. So for such a kind of global, serious, deadly virus, we don't know what is it. The price we must pay is to isolation, quarantine, to suspend the transportation, to cut off the transmission of the spread. And this is the responsibility of some major country of China, I'm proud to say. And I challenge any one country, I challenge anyone, any country, including Americans, to do the same. The third 
action we have taken is the national medical staff and resources have been mobilized and deployed to Wuhan to offer all needed support. Wuhan, now they suffer a lot. The, the medical uh, doctor workers is not enough. So the local government and medical staff in Hubei province have been working hard to combat the spread of epidemic and to treat the diagnosed patient. Just now you saw two hospitals, specialized hos hospital with over 2,600 2, beds for the coronavirus treatment uh, has, been, be, has been constructed in Wuhan, I'm proud to say. We completed one of the specialized hospitals like this with 1,000 beds in 10 days. One of them today already put, completed and put into full operation, run by the Chinese army. The other one will be completed in three days and put into operation. This is the Chinese spirit. This is the Chinese spirit. This is the capacity of China to fight against the disease. We also like to take this opportunity to appreciate the South African people and your government while we build and contract the hospital day and night. The South African scientists working together with us. We, use, we need the drone to give us the light, the light equipment from South Africa, from South African scientists. And I'm happy to tell you that the South African youth scientists, now they are in Wuhan, the, epi, the, the epidemic center, working together with us. I appreciate so much. The central government and local government has made, has made emergency location of about 10 billion US dollars as a fund and, re and the reserve medical supply such a productive, protective garments, glasses, masks, gloves, and medicine to Wuhan and Hubei province in the country. Now, most factory national, nationwide had resumed their operation and production. Now the people scared. But the Chinese people, workers, engineers, rushed to the, hot, the, the factory to resume the production and operation to produce the medical supply we need to relieve the shortage. And the Green China for the national wide logistic support have been effectively operating. I'm very proud of my country and people. China is not fighting alone. Wuhan is not fighting alone. Whenever China faces any serious epidemic, natural disasters, and any challenges to China, the Chinese people both at home and abroad always get united and fight as one. This day, thousands of severe and military medical staff, including doctors, nurses, and medical workers, from around the country rush to Wuhan to join the local to step, step up treatment efforts. And now a lot all over the country, the nurses, medical workers already step mobilized and stand by to give the hand to Wuhan and the needed area anytime. We are fighting day and night, more and more personal nation, nationwide are uh, stand by to adjust anytime. More than 100, I'm so touched, more than 100 hotels in Wuhan opening the door free of charge for medical personnel, visitors and foreigners, people from the world, including the people in China, overseas Chinese community, and foreign friends such as South African government and South African universal safety products you must manufacture have been extending their helpful hand timely by donating kind and cash, including a fresh vegetable. The farmer in China, far from Wuhan, donate their vegetable to Wuhan. 
What they donate to Wuhan and China is not only the kind and cash, but the solidarity, the strength, and confidence to China. So I'd like to say a few words yesterday. There are two South Africa promising entrepreneurs. They're very young entrepreneurs. They produce the mask. They understand China at this moment with sort of their supply. So they knock my door, come to the aims to knock my door in two days. We have the handover ceremony of 30,000 masks. You must. And the Air China all committed themselves to fly those mud to China within the week to Wuhan, free of charge. So I think we are fighting together. Uh, we are fighting together. The fourth measure we have taken is for openness and transparency, for a high degree of responsibility for the global health security. The Chinese government timely released the latest epidemic situations and progress in prevention and control and updated every day. The Chinese government has been updating the latest epidemic to the public, both in China and the world. And the nationwide public education, that's very important, nationwide public education through all the meetings has kept on operating in China on how to prevent and control the spread of the virus and infectious disease. We keep up educating our people, to let them, everybody must be, must be well educated how to work together. So this is a very effective system. We have identified the full genetic sequence of the new coronavirus at the shortest time and share timely with the WHO and set up a special team with the top expert to carry out joint research. China has notified and shared epidemic information with the WHO and relevant countries as well as China's Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Timely verify and releases the information of the suspected and confirmed cases. Just the, you see the, the list, the, the list will release every day. China has accumulated practical experience of public health instant by coping with SARS, H1N1 infusion, bird flu, Ebola outbreak in Africa. We are fully confident that under the strong leadership of the CPC with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, and with the extensive understanding and support of the Chinese people and the international communities, the system, resources, and capacity of China are more and strong enough to win the battle against the outbreak of the novel coronavirus in the coming weeks. Now, I would like to take your questions. Thank you.
Thank you. I think this is a very important question. Uh, yes, in, indeed. Thank you for your sympathy and kind support first. We indeed run the, into the temporary shortage of the medical supplies, such as protective garments, Google's uh, mask, gloves for the doctor and the men, and, and the civilian people in the past few weeks. The main reason for this issue, I think it's quite understandable. It's quite understandable. As a human being, we have to understand it because of several reasons. First, just now as I say, this epidemic is so unexpected and up to now is a no virus. So this is the new coronavirus. It's this kind of virus is the first time to infect the humankind and poses a serious threat to the public health. So we need time to recognize the virus, to isolate the virus, to sequence the gymnos and develop the vaccine and medicine to deal with it. Sometimes now there's some people in the world, I, I, I got to know the, me, the Western media. They say they understand before. Now you have the people, in, in fact, people in your country. Just deal with them. Get them recovered soon. I love to see that. So this is unknown up to today. The resources of infection from this coronavirus has remained unknown. The nature of the virus remains unclear. So those experts there, the top this in the most of the country there, they said they know. Deal with the people in your home. So we need time to identify. The demand for those medical items, as you mentioned there, I think is huge and growing. No one, I think no one in the country, no country at that time they stop such a kind of things to get ready. So the second, because of the way long spring hospital holiday. According to our children, that is the most important holiday in China. We give them one week holiday. So all the factory, all the shop, all the school, university, and government office stop and close. So no production at that time. And the third, I think, is the logistic support is a big challenge. All the, only the transportation at that time, you get ready to transport the passengers. But now, some public transportation suspended. So it's a big challenge. First, we need to the kind. The second, we need to transport. You scare, keep this in from the virus. Who will be there to, to drive? So I think it's a, not easy, but I'm proud to say my government will put that logistic transportation operation there. But of course, there are also some imbalance of the supply about the different region, different community. Now I'm happy to see that now in Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus. This morning I saw the TV program, the, the news. The supermarkets are full. It's no problem. Uh, so now the Chinese army also mobilized to more than 1,000 truck to transport the kind, whatever they need, to Wuhan. It's no problem there. So it takes time to transport the supply from one region to the most needed area. So for the whole country, generally speaking, it's no problem. But some, some area, especially for the area, because of the coordination, or perhaps we have some problem. But I love to say, fortunately, China is the second largest economy but the largest manufacturer in the world. So many things made in China. So we have the centralized, effective national mobilization system and enough resources and capacity to handle this issue well. First, as I said before, the central government has located, and the local government have located around about 10 billion US dollars already. The same, and my president said, the central government and the government at all level must make sure they find enough to deal with this virus. So the money is no problem there. And also now the Central Reserve Medical Support uh, Supply already support Wuhan, Hubei province, and the whole country as well. So now the supply is growing. 
Second, loss of factory is basically the medical supply manufacturer in the country has been resume operation and increased production to relieve the shortage. I'm proud to say. This morning, I was informed yesterday, our capacity of production of the mask already increased 20 million masks a day yesterday. And we hope by the end of February, our production capacity of mask could reach almost 180 million protective masks per day. By the end of this month, China every day we can produce 180 million protective masks. That is our capacity. So third, many Chinese companies, civil society institutions, and overseas Chinese community and foreign friend government have been actively donating the needed medical supply and fund to Wuhan and Hubei province and other parts of China. I think the, the issue of logistic support for the daily life is okay. The production capacity now is growing. So the shortage of the medical supply will be, will be solved very soon. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, I first want to commend uh, the Chinese government for the very efficient way it's addressed this very deadly virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we wish you all the strength. Um, we know that the virus is spreading quite quickly to other countries. Mm -hmm. I was wondering um, what is the Chinese government doing to ensure that it doesn't spread across the borders? And secondly, I was just interested to know, um, do you need support from South Africa's citrus-growing community um, for perhaps donations? Mm, thank you. I think that is a lot of common concern. So there are some South African citizens, in, including business people, visitors, scientists, teachers, and students still stage, stay in Wuhan and China. This morning, I'm, I'm happy to see there's one scientist, South African scientist in Wuhan. He go to the TV to tell us some story about that. A man there are some more, more than 3,000 students in China. Now, as the government told me that you have 45 teachers in China, and among them, 165, 165 students study in Hubei, the Wuhan and Hubei the province, in 13 universities in Hubei province. That is what we know. So before, we, before the Lunar New Year, we already communicate each of them, the authority, all the school. They, we have that record to identify who they are, where they are, and they have to keep getting the info, give us the information every day. So China has been making and will make every effort to ensure the health and safety of each and every foreigners in China especially the international students. All universities in China now has, been, has taken a very strict measure to keep campus far away from the epidemics. We have tried and will try our best to make sure that medical care, daily supplies, and logistic support for the foreigners. The Chinese embassy in South Africa here is in close contact with the education authority of Hubei to track the situation of South African students there every day. Fortunately, it is to say, up to now, no case of infection among the South African students have been reported to us so far. And in China, not only in Hubei. The South African government and people will be ensured that China has the strong ability and capacity and enough resources to manage the public health emergency effectively and the South African citizen in China, Hubei province, and Wuhan in particular are safe. 
There's no evidence or reason to support repatriation or emergency evacuation of South African citizens from China. Parents of South African students and family of those South African in China can feel reassured and relaxed. It is quite normal, quite normal to see some people, some, some worries and anxiety from those people in China and their family out of China and their parents or friends out of China to have some worry. I think it's quite natural because you don't know what happened there. So I think it's quite natural. But it is, my suggestion is it is wise, safe, cheap, right for the South African students and other citizens to stay well in Wuhan and China at this crucial moment for a while. I think it's wise to stay there because, to be frank to say, it is unsafe and costly and risk up for them to fly back to South Africa at this moment because you come from the, the various worst hit area. Now that the transportation tools is the, is the channel for the transmission of the spread of the virus. So I don't know when, who will allow you to fly back. So you keep, you stay in the campus, you stay in the hotel, you stay in the community, your food, daily life will be insured, the medical care, medical supply will be sure, and in case something happened, the designated and specialized hospital is ready to get ready there. So I think it's best for the people to stay there, to work together as a friend, as a human being. We need to stand together at this crucial moment to fight and win this battle against the virus. So I can, so for South African uh, students and citizens in China, in case of any help, they are free to contact the local community and university. The authority there who are 24 hours on duty. For emergency assistance, they also can contact South African embassy in Beijing and the consulate in, Sh in Shanghai. Consulate General in Shanghai, or the Chinese Embassy in South Africa through my official Twitter account. I have the Chinese Ambassador Twitter account every, every night before I go to, go to Battle Street, I respond there. The Ambassador Lin Song Tian, I hope I have somewhere for you to. That is my uh, uh, Twitter account. And call the education attachment meter Wan Tao Yi. We have the Educational attaché here in my embassy, I opened his cell phone to the public already. The number is 073-285-8403, meter one. 073-285-8403. You are free. He's on duty 24 hours. Of course, we have the ship, don't worry. The whole line of the Chinese Embassy in South Africa and the South African Embassy and Consulate in China has been has already published so far so as to help the South African citizen in China to get easier and timely access to the latest information and help. I think that is the measure we are about to make sure the people there will be safe. Yeah. Oh. Okay, the, other, the second question is how to stop that virus from spreading or from entering into South Africa and Africa? I think that is very, uh, a very important question I also try to answer. As a responsible major country, as I say, the Chinese government 
have taken comprehensive and free control measures to stop the virus from spreading out of China. This is why now this is the only continent at this moment, up to today, we hope, no confirmed cases to this country. You can imagine we have the direct flight, and we did not stop. But why the virus did not come to this continent? Because we stopped them in China. Nowadays, it's not easy to get on board. That's now, as I show you, whoever want to come to the, get on board, they got the air ticket, they have to fill two forms. One is this the exit and entry health declaration from the peoples of Park of China, very in detail, where you are from. And the second, I think, is most important is to sign this form. Uh, you see, they what called the passenger information on registration form. This one, they have to sign, including where they are from, and also the passport number, the phone number, and where they are from, so that we can, in case something happens, we know who they are. And if you're not sure, in the past two weeks, that your traveling record is not insured us, no one allowed to get on board. So now we carry out the temperature screening at all airport, seaport, and railway station in China to stop the flow of the ear travelers and the potential patients or the potential infected people. Chinese travel agencies have been requested to suspend the group troop, the, the tours, both at home and internationally, to avoid the last scale spread, to, to, to stop the patient, infected patient, uh, infected through a virus from uh, coming out of China. The Chinese international airline has been taking more stranger measures such as temperature, screening, and all passengers are requested to fill in the form and sign the declaration form to make sure the record of the traveler and the personnel contact, the personnel contact is safe for each and every passenger traveling out of China. We also keep close contact with relevant countries to share information timely for them to quickly identify and diagnose the infected people back on their soil. In case something happens, we can go through this, uh, this form to know where they are to contact them and bring them under the isolation. In case something happens unexpectedly, unexpectedly, we are ready to work together to deal with it properly and promptly. And Prom and prom three, mm. I like to say, we are ready to fight again. Mm. Not only properly, but also prompt. Thank you. And now we have two left for some Thank you. Uh, it's unfortunate to say, huh? American is American. The worst is the worst. It's quite natural. They did as usual as they did. When the Ebola break up in Sierra Leone, Liberia, <coughs> and Guinea, they evacuate their diplomats. They are nationals. Close the airline to reach the three countries and region. But China, we do the different. 
So I, at that time, I'm proud to say I was a DZ for the African, China African relations. And I respond quickly. I call our brother, I called some authority. Our brother and sister in those regions are dying. Money is something, but it's sometimes it's not everything. We need a chopped aircraft to fly the medical supply. We need the, the, the medical, we understand the medical doctors, workers, they are not enough. We are proud. We chapter 23 aircraft to fly the needed material, medical materials, and dispatch more than 1,000 military, the top level military medical doctors and civilian medical doctors. Those people have a very good experience fighting against Ebola in Beijing. That's the story. So for those people, uh, I did quite, I have to say, American is American. The worst is the worst. We, this is why my president call on the world to work together for a better community of a shared future for mankind, my dear. This is the battle between the human, human being and the nature. We need to work together. We have no choice. So China has already isolated the virus, successfully developed and produced the effective reagents to detect the virus. By now, more than 475 infected patients have been cured, recovered, and leave the hospital for home. That means we are almost got there. We are almost get the program to deal with the disease. We be, just as I'm, I, I know now, every day more than 140 people will recover and leave the hospital for home. We believe that this novel coronavirus could be prevented, could be cured, could be controlled. The epidemic is expected to reach the peak in a few couple of days. And from there, we hope. They will come down to the end. China's prevention and control system, effort and capacity were highly applaud, applauded by WHO and most countries in the world. This is why the DZ of WHO, Honorable Ted Ross, when declaring the outbreak of the coronavirus a public health emergency for international concern. He stressed again and again, let the main region for lack declaration made by the WHO is not because what is happening in China, not distrust China, but because of what is happening in other countries is basically those with weaker health system which are ill prepared to deal with it. I think it's very clear why he made such a kind of declaration. He said the declaration is not a vote of no confidence of ch in China, but on contrary. WHO continues to have confidence in China's capacity to control the outbreak. He also stressed that the extraordinary measures and the transparent and effective ways that China has taken is commendable. The speed which China detected the outbreak, isolated the virus, sequenced the gymnomes and share it with the WHO and the world are very impressive and beyond words. In many ways, he said, China is setting, is actually setting a new standard for outbreaks, outbreak response. He said, this is not an exaggeration. Therefore, the DZ of WHO reiterated 
that there's no reason for measures that are necessarily interfere with the international travel and trade. WHO doesn't recommend limited trade and movement or the evacuation of foreign nationals from China and left the decision from the WHO. But unfortunately to see our American friend and some Western country at this moment, the two, they are different. Now, unfortunately to see my worries and concern at the beginning, I threw my Twitter, I sent my, my worry and concern. Now, unfortunately now, they already happened in Japan. My serious concern and worries are left while evacuating their national from Wuhan and China. They also transmit the infectious virus called the novel coronavirus back to their territories. And if that happens, which truly poses a great threat to, the spread, to spread the coronavirus to the globe, to the world. Now, three days before, Japan only have 11 confirmed cases in Japan. But unfortunately, now, by the end of last, yesterday, last night, Japan jump become the first in the world. They have 20 confirmed cases. And unfortunately to say, there's one young man who is a coordinator for the evacuation campaign when he arrived in Japan yesterday. He jumped from the building to death. Unfortunately, it created more unfortunate something happened. So I'm sorry to say. So now we understand that we all, during the in 20, 2014, it's 2014, when we fight together, you see, we not only send our kind medical supply to every affected area and countries, dispatch our military and, and civilian personnel to there, all our ambassador, diplomats, export businessmen, Chinese community, are, were requested to stay there, to fight together with local government and people side by side, day and night, until we win the Ebola. I'm proud to say, at that time, I was at DZ and I participate in that campaign. And we fight together, we fought together with the, our African brothers and sisters and win that battle. We ha were happy. At that time, the land, American president, His Excellency Obama, he approved, approved China, command China, the great effort, the leading effort we have made. And that is what we are doing there. So, there's one ambassador. He stayed there for six months, and he said, can I go back home for my holiday? My answer is very clear and definitely. You are the ambassador. Now the people are suffering, are fighting. You have no choice but to stay there until we win this battle. That is my answer to one ambassador there. He called me, so may I go back home for a few days holiday? I said, no. You are the ambassador. You are the commander in the field. You have no choice but to stay there together with the people, both Chinese and the local people. I'm proud. No Chinese diplomat, no embassy, no Chinese community have the holiday. And I'm proud to say, we China helped Liberia to build one hospital in 28 days in Liberia. In 25 days, at that time, all the construction company closed. No people work. But how can we fry the material, the building material, and build? It's a big challenge. But Chinese, Chinese government, we got it. We get things done and complete that hospital and put into full operation in way equipped and put into full operation in 28 days. That is the record we are doing. So we all that novel coronavirus is posing 
a global threat to the health of mankind. I call on the international concerted effort to win this battle. So my our belief is very simple. There's only way to face these global challenges of the human being. We have no choice but to work together to win the battle against this virus and bring them under our control. And that is our suggestion, we hope. American friends, the European Union, all the different countries, you are free, ensure, and relax. China is safe. We have strong the capacity and resources is strong enough to bring this disease, the coronavirus, under our control as soon as possible. I thank you. I thank you. You keep your eyes open on the continent. What happened here? My eye is open. I did not enjoy my holiday of Lunar New Year because all my staff together with me, the ambassador is the commander in the field. We keep our eyes open. The response system of emergency response system is already working in the embassy. So all those information every day, every night come to our eyes immediately. So I'm happy to see that both China and South Africa have been in close contact, both through the bilateral and unilateral channels, such as WHO. Uh, the, other, the, the Department of Health, Public Health, the Ministry and their staff, they keep contact with Chinese authority and the authority of WHO very soon. You can imagine when the DZ of the WHO made that declaration. In a few hours, 7 o'clock the next day, your foreign, the South African uh, Minister of Public Health, Honorable Mukais, had their press briefing and give us the program how to respond to it. I think that is the number of one country to follow that, in that, that situation. So recently, the Chinese Embassy and DECO and Department of Health and other stakeholders in the country, we held the consultation and coordination meetings to discuss the latest situation and how to join hand to deal with this issue properly and effectively, and already establish the close contact mechanism between us. The DDZ, DZ of the DECO keep contact me, contacting me all day long. Our phone is 24 hours on duty, so we contact, very close contact. The South African government has great importance to prevent and control the transmission of the novel coronavirus into South Africa and has kicked off the high level response system to deal with it. I'm happy to see the operational center for emergency in South Africa for national response has been put into full operation in 24 hours. The strict measures and procedures to prevent the virus from entering the country, from prevent the virus from entering the country, such as conduct, conducting street temperature screen in the international airport for international travelers, as its entry airport has been Intensifying, the special measure has been introduced in our Tembo International Airport where travelers own direct aircraft from China and Asia countries are required to complete a questionnaire for possible contact tracing. The South African Department of Health has already designated 11 specialized hospitals in all provinces in South Africa to get ready to quarantine, diagnose, and treat the patient. 
We are also committed to strengthening the joint prevention and control cooperation with South Africa to prevent the import of the virus from entering South Africa. So I think now, just as I know, one first we have, whoever want to fly out of China, we have the very strict uh, procedure and system to check their record, their tracing record, and their body condition. Uh, whoever must make sure a qualified, a good health, a qualified to get on board. So here, after a 14 hour flight in the air, they come to check again. So I think the system is working. So once we are ready to work together to stop them first, but we're also ready to deal with the suspected or unexpected infectious, infected person to come to this country and continent. Once there are imported cases in South Africa, China is ready to jointly deal with it. Now, we are on duty to follow every, each Chinese in South Africa. We already try to, to see who they are, where they are, who come from Hubei and Wuhan, all of them under our registration. And every Chinese national on trip to visit South Africa, they are well informed to fill their form to stay at home for at least one week. Ah, for the company, my staff, at least you are safe in China. But when you come to this country, you, they are requested to stay at home at least one week. And every day they have to report to us their health temperature, their body temperature. So I think now the Air China has taken strict uh, measures to conduct the temperature screening and pas passenger profiling at the asset port just now I showed the form in China to prevent strictly the spread of the virus to South Africa and Africa. So we are very sure that by keeping timely contact and close coordination and cooperation between China and South Africa, between the embassy here and the DECO and some authority and the government of the country, we will be sure to, and we will try our best to effectively prevent, to prevent and control the normal coronavirus, both in China, in South Africa, and Africa as a whole. We need to work together, not only to pray, but also fight together to try our best to work together to prevent that infectious virus from coming to this continent. That is, I can ensure you, we are working, we are fighting day and night. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Okay, come to the Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Okay, now, uh, how many Chinese exactly here? No one knows. No one knows because they stay here and keep traveling. 
If they have no problem, they are free. If they have a problem, they come to the embassy. Now my job is to keep my eyes open to those fly from China arrive when they arrive. And we have some Chinese community. We sue the community to tell us where's the something happened here. So I think that is very important. And once we can ensure you, no one in China, in South Africa, in China, any family will keep their suspected case at home. Because when you keep the suspected case at home, the family will be infected and will be killed. Unfortunately, to say at the very beginning, we don't know what kind of virus they are. When he's infected, he felt very, at the very beginning, he felt very normal. He did not feel abnormal. So there's one gentleman who traveled to Wuhan, and he came back home in Shenzhen, and all the family gathering for Lunar New Year. Unfortunately, to, to say, three days later, six of the seven family, family members get infected. So you understand now why the number of the suspected case increased dramatically in China. Because now if whoever get fever, get cold, get uncomfortable, we have the national response system. And whoever respond to that, report to that system, you will get the free medical treatment. My dear friend, we have to remember China have over 1.4 billion population. 1.4 billion population. Five people in the world, one in China. So now, of course, the system is open. No one keep the, inf the suspected case at home, so the number is increased. It's quite natural. So in South Africa, all the people travel from China here, whoever go back home for the Lunar New Year, we request them to stay at home for a while until the epidemic under our control to come back. Almost most of our staff, whoever go back to who who pay promise, they are requested to stop there. Not allow, not any Chinese people and also travelers, business people at this moment allow to get out of China from Hubei. We can ensure it. But the embassy, whoever wants to come, have to get my permission. The business people here, we ask them to stay there for a while or stay at home for the self quarantine for at least one week before they get on board. So I think that is one thing the travel, Chinese travel before the Lunar New Year every year. The Western people, European Union, Australia, America, they welcome the Chinese visitors as a travelers because the tourism grows. Chinese travel become the most welcome visitor in the world because your economy, you need the visitors. So be before we know what happened in China there, they already have their plan, get their ticket, order their hotel, they are in good health, of course, they travel around the world. But unfortunately to say, because that kind of virus, no one knows what happened there. And whoever get infected at the very beginning, several days, he did not feel any uncomfortable. So this is why now we have some cases all together up to today. 23 countries in the world have the confirmed cases. You see, in total number of 146, 146 in the world, including 20 in Japan, 19 in Thailand, Singapore in 18, American 8, Germany 8, and some Finland 1, Spain 1. I think the traveler. Now, let me give you another number, American, sorry to say. This is the information from American DC. CDC estimate left from October 1st, 2019, three months before, to January 25th, some days before, three months more, there have been 
19 million people, American people, get suffer from the flu illness. 19 million American people suffer from flu illness. I thought I had to say how many people get hospital. How many? 180 thousand people go to the hospital. And how many people die? 8,000 Americans die of the flu. Sir, Three months ago. I will come to you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll come to you soon. Oh, it's a good question. And also, from 2010 to 2019, every year, more than 37, 37,000 American die of flu. This is, this is the CDC, American CDC estimate, officially. I think, so for the traveler, we did not ask American to, we did not evacuate our people from that area. We did not stop the, the fly because we trust, we have confidence in American their resources and capacity to deal with them. But unfortunately, they're talking so high about the human rights, but so many die. 37,000 a year die of fruit. So now I respond, that is travel. The second question, how about travel? The third question, the delayed response. Don't worry, I come to you. Just now, as I say, this virus is so unexpected. Up to today, no people in the world, including American, did not discover where the resources of this infection of coronavirus from. The nature of the virus remain unknown. The risk of mutation remain unclear. But we know is the ability to spread is growing. But up to today, 146 people in the world confirmed in 23 countries. But they, of course, we are happy WHO declared that kind of the coronavirus as a public health emergency of international concern. Let me still aware all the people in the world to get ready to respond with it, but we did not ask the WHO to declare the situation, the flu illness in America as a health, public health emergency. We are so kind, because why? We trust American. We have the confidence of American, the number one developed country in the, developed country in the world. They have the resources and capacity, and I hope they will do to protect their people as a human rights. I thank you. Thank you. I think my suggestion as I don't know, for those South African people, foreigners, all the foreigners, including the American people who are in China, they are the friends of China. They are the guests of China. They are our people, our friends. Sometimes, according to our cultures, I tell you one tradition. When we are in the extremely poverty in 1960, 70, even 80, I was born in a village. My mother always preserved the, the fresh air to get ready, the visitor, 
from some relative to come to my home. We did not have the right to eat the egg, but he had to keep it to the visitors, unexpected visitors. So that is our tradition. So all the foreigners in China, they are not our enemy. They are our friends. They are our visitors. So they will keep well. We need to pay more attention to those people. First, the medical care. All of them must check the body, temperature every day. We have the authority. And also, if in case something happens, we send them to the designated hospital. It's no problem. We already have the designated hospital for all the foreigners, specialized for foreigners. So for any help, the authority is ready there, 24 hours on duty. The second is the daily supply is a big challenge, as before we can cook. Now the Chinese, the daily, daily supply is a big challenge to us, but we can ensure you, even in Wuhan, the supply now is enough. We always open the green channel for the logistic supply for the fighting against this virus. So it's no problem for the traveler. So I like to advise them: trust China. Give the hand to us. Give us confidence and strength and solidarity. Stay well in the community, in the village, at home, in the university. You are safe. In case something happens, the system is working. We have over 1.3 population up to today. A little more than. 300 people die, unfortunately, die from this type of this disease. But of course, we have 17,000 confirmed cases and more than 20,000 suspected cases. So I think compared to the population, of course, we deal with it very seriously. But now the national quarantine campaign and system response system has been operated. So it's no problem there. Just stay well, trust us. For the travel, international travel ban, I think it's quite understandable. Some countries like to stop their people from coming. No problem. You are free. But do you think it's necessary? This is another question. Now, first, the Chinese, whoever have the favor, the body is, the, the health is not sure, is safe. We are not allow them to travel out. We are not allow them. We stop them there. We will bring this virus under our control in China. We fight to them. Even in China, even in China, it's not the whole country. You see, my country is so huge. But now, most of the cases come from Wuhan and Hubei province. Thousands. But the other provinces, for example, in Guangdong. Guangdong have more than 100 million population in one province. Of course, now they have to get several, several hundred thousand, I, I got the case. Oh, Guangdong, you see. Guangdong now, they have the 683 confirmed cases. In one, over 100 million population, they have 683 confirmed cases, and no one died of the virus. And but 14 of them were recovered. Now, no more suspected. So you see a lot of the provinces now, zero. Yesterday, we have 57 people die of the virus. Only few provinces, one in Chongqing, one in Beijing, one in Shanghai. The other provinces did not die. I think that is, I say, in China, they are safe. In Beijing, they are safe. So then, this is why the WHO reiterate again and again, there's no region, no evidence for any measures unnecessary to interfere with the international trade and travel. But unfortunately, some country, some people, unfortunately, they like to criticize the fighting against the epidemics. It's not good because why? Any evil attempt to criticize such a kind of fighting against disease, I think is not allowed and not a 
acceptable. Because this is the battle between the humanity and the human humanity. It's not between the, the war between the country to country. We need to work together. We, of course, as a country with responsibility, we have to keep and fight and bring the virus under our control, not allow them to travel out of China. For the economic impact, this is very important. China is a main engine to drive the world economic development. China, since 2008, when the financial crisis happened, every year, the contribution from China to the world economic growth rate reached about 30 percent. The economic global growth rate, 30 percent, depends on China. So some people now at this moment, this crucial moment, to criticize the fighting against the disease is not good. Because if the engine of this economy of China collapses, everybody will pay the price. But of course, we will not make them happen because this is not new for us. Those people always do the same. For example, now, they like to do whatever they like to do. Just with the evil attempt to contain the growing of China. Very simple. Now the issue of Hong Kong, the issue of Taiwan, the issue of Xinjiang. The Xinjiang in the past three years, no more terrorist attack. Instead of that, the people, more than 150 million people rushed to Xinjiang for tourists. So the economic growth rate for more than 6 to 7 percent of the Xinjiang region. The people are living in harmony, they enjoy their life and work together. But the Americans, they said, they concerned about the humorous there. My dear, be kind to each other. We have the, in, we fight against the terrorists in the Chinese way, and very effective way, to bring in, to give them equipped with the skill and knowledge so that they have ability to survive themselves. And that is the human rights in China. The human rights in China is very simple. The right to work, the right to live, the right to school, the right to hospital, the right to, to live is not easy in China. The right to work, every year we need more than 13 million new jobs created for our people. The right to live is not easy. All people like to live in the, the, uh, the, the, the big house with over 1.4 billion population. The right to eat, now it's a big change to us. Everybody isolate themselves, they stay at home. We like to eat, to make sure over 1.4 billion people to eat, but stay at home. I challenge anyone in the world. And let it the human rights in China. The right to work, the right to live, the right to eat, the right to school, the right to hospital, to make sure over 1.4 billion population, we have the rights. It's not easy, but we got it. By the end of this year, we will achieve our goal to make sure China, with over 1.4 billion population, will be free of poverty. And that is the contribution to the human being, to the Chinese people, and to the world. Let us work together. We know we like to make sure China and the economy. Now, we have suffered from temporary. For short term, we have the negative impact on our economy. But when this virus under our control, all the production and operation will resume. And I think the economic, you understand the Chinese. Uh, we work day and night there. We do not have the time to talk. But we always humble to learn, but hard to work. We will achieve our economic growth rate there. Don't worry. I thank you. I thank you so much for your attention.